Okay, now I'm going to show you the two views of Ableton Live, Session View and Arrangement View. I'm going to walk you through how to record between these views, which is something unique to Ableton. And I'm going to touch on a couple other points that I think are important to mention regarding the views, which is quantization and scenes, as well as follow actions. So I'm going to um, now use the tab shortcut to jump between what, uh, what you see here in session view, which is the vertical alignment of tracks uh, with headers located up here. And hitting tab, I'm jumping into arrangement now, which is the traditional left to right view of time uh, with our tracks aligned over here to the right with the track headings up here. So right off the bat, you see that these are two views of time itself and working with time in Ableton. Um, the tracks are mirrored between the two views. However, the clips and what can exist within the tracks can be entirely distinct between arrangement view and session view. So you can have what I think of as the background default layer playing in the arrangement view, which can be overlaid and on top of from anything played or triggered from the session view. And I'm gonna show you this later, um, uh, but at first I want to walk through some of the basics of arrangement view, just so you're aware. The loop brace here is what defines how you're gonna loop within arrangement view. And uh, that brace and what's the behavior of the brace is defined up here in this control bar. These loop endpoint set, end settings define the loop size and these buttons define the behavior as the playhead crosses over either the beginning of the loop, which will cause, uh, if this is clicked on, it will turn recording on if the playhead crosses over the beginning of the loop. And if this is enabled, then the loop will in fact loop over itself. And this can cause overdubbing if this is enabled here. Now, if this last punch out button is set, then the behavior is that it will turn off recording as it passes over this endpoint. And I'm gonna leave this on so that you see this in effect later. Um, some other cool points that you uh, are features of arrangement view are the ability to set cue points or locators wherever you would like. So in this case, if I am at this point and I want to set a locator, just click the button and it should drop a locator in the spot. I think it's dropping the locator in the beginning of the loop section up there. And you can cycle between these and using this, this button here to cycle between. Now, going back to um, session mode here, I'm going to walk through um, scenes and follow actions. Now, scenes are what make up uh, or comprise a group of clips together that have been organized um, and go well together. Um, this can be an entire song or this can be a transition between songs. Um, movements of music can be defined by collections of scenes working together and that's that's what that's what the launching of these scenes will accomplish and um, you can open up the mapping editor at mapping editor here will show you the uh, hidden ability to jump between these scenes and apply your MIDI controller to these settings to skip between scenes and launch scenes. And you can only see these um, mapping settings by going into MIDI map mode here. So follow actions. Follow actions are what allow you to create cascading variations effects of clips calling other clips and uh, decision trees of clips and sometimes causing um, combinations that you're not prepared for. So this is all determined by the follow actions settings down here on a clip by clip basis. So click on the clip that you're interested in and go down to the follow actions. And this follow action time here is what defines the length of time that's gonna pass before the action occurs. So this needs to be set to be whatever the original clip length is. Now, after that, you need to select what you want your follow action A to be. In this case, I'm going to say just play the next clip down. There's a few options you have here. First and last, define what the 
top and bottom of a stack of clips do. Uh, next and previous are obvious. Play again, stop, no action are obvious. Uh, any is to select any, uh, any playing clip, and other is to select any clip that's not playing. Now, after you have selected what action you want to occur, then you need to select what the probability of that action is. And um, you don't have to have two actions. You can uh, select this, you know, you can make this no action and make it zero so that you only just have one follow action you're working with. Um, if you set this to one, then you have a 50-50 chance of this other action occurring as well. So you have somewhat more uh, variety and uh, unexpected results. So let's click on play and you'll see it jump between either this next clip or the bottom clip. So it chose B that time and uh, you click it again and you'll see if it, it chose A that time. So we can see that it's jumping back and forth and uh, this can create some uh, interesting patterns on top of what's going on in arrangement view. So let's uh, to, to start uh, to start the actual recording of session material into arrangement view you do that by enabling record mode and um, first to do that I'm going to walk through a couple of these features up here to understand what's going on before we start recording uh, obviously you want, you're going to want to be aware of what your tempo is going at if before you start recording something and uh, these settings here control whether you want the playhead to follow the, the record as it's happening. And metronome obviously will allow you to hear the uh, metronome click and play along if you're going to add some drums or something to what's being recorded. The time signature here is what you definitely want to set before you start recording. And uh, you can nudge as well right here if need be or tap tempo. Now we covered um, these settings, uh, this is what sets the cursor up here, and the play and stop are the standard transport settings. Uh, record mode is what you enable before you hit play to start recording into arrangement view. So that's, uh, we're turning that on now because we're getting ready to record. We talked about overdubbing and back to the arrangement is something I'll cover once we get some material into the arrangement view. Uh, this button right here is the edit mode, uh, also known as the battle axe for the control B um, shortcut. Um, learned that from a friend in Austin. Now, uh, now that we have covered uh, the basics of the record options up here at the top bar, we're ready to go. Uh, we have enabled our tracks for record, which is done by arming them. Uh, you can click down here to arm and be mindful of as you arm them, you might be disarming other tracks. So go back over here and rearm the ones that you want armed by holding down command and clicking on arm. So now that we're fully armed and ready to record, we are ready to go. We can uh, make sure record is clicked, jump over to session, or sorry, arrange view now, and uh, select the loop and click play. So it's playing that one clip, so I went ahead and launched the top scene, and uh, so it's adding some more here. And so you can, like I said, click on the this button to enable follow mode, although the scale you can't really quite see it at this point. Um, we're going to see it punch out here as it crosses over this loop point, and uh, that worked. Um, so once we're in arrangement, we can, I'll go ahead and point out the overview window up here, which allows you to really quickly scale and manipulate what you're looking at. You can scroll up or down while you're moving around or left and right within it. So you can really hone in on what you want to see really quickly and make sure it all fits in one window. I did that with... Um, Command Option L to disable the uh, uh, clip view down there to give us more real estate. Now, since we had sort of a partial take with that, uh, I can go ahead and select this main piece and just hit Command L to bring the loop brace onto just this block of music. So now I'm only working on this block and um, I can loop it and uh, start experimenting. Um, 
so this was uh, taking material from session and recording directly into arrangement and this is uh, what I call this ebb and flow of taking material from session into arrangement and back into session optionally. Now to get material back into session mode um, you have to have something playing in arrangement so let's get this going. And uh, say we've manipulated this, we can add a lot of uh, changes to it. And at the point that we're ready, we can run Command Shift I, which will which grays out what we're looking at right here. Because what it did is create a new scene dropped in right here that represents all the playing clips that are in this arrangement view. So if we go over here, we see that. Now, instead of playing out of arrangement, all these clips are launched in session, and they each have these little session icon status uh, cycles showing that they're running from uh, session view instead of arrangement view. Now, if I were to click on this back to arrangement button, this is what will take and uh, go back to whatever is in arrangement. So this is a way to get back to a pristine copy of your arrangement view material and uh, stop whatever's playing in session view in one one click. And what we see is now this is reactivated, it's not gray, and what we see down in the track status icons are that it's playing through existing material instead of uh, the cycles that are in session view. So this is a quick way to look at session view and see what tracks are playing here and what tracks are playing in arrangement in the background. Okay, so uh, in summary, I've shown you how to work between session and arrange view to record and capture scenes back and forth between the two views. I've shown you quantization and touched on how to use that to quantize your clips as desired. I've shown you scenes and follow actions as well to create some interesting combinations and variations in session view. And I have walked you through how to uh, navigate arrangement view and um, how to work with your music directly in it and uh, get to a point of uh, hopefully finalizing and exporting your audio. So thank you for watching.